Located in Eldoret, Baraka Farm is a unique home to Lewa Children's Home and Baraka Farmhouse Cheese. Baraka Farm was founded to provide food and revenue to support the orphans living at the adjacent Lewa Children's Home. The farm offers much needed wholesome, healthy foods including milk and cheese from its dairy producing operation with a surplus sold in the marketplace. My name is Stanley Aluvisia, so I'm the production manager at, the, at this farm. Baraka Farm Cheese Factory now is a, is a factory whereby we are producing milk, we are, we are making yogurt, mala, cheese. At the same time, we are collecting milk from other farmers. It's also a collection center. We started by uh, planting maize, at the same time rearing some dairy animals. So these animals, we were to feed the children's milk. So after doing that for a, a very short time, we had breeding of animals, which led us to a lot of uh, milk in the farm, which brought us now to making uh, mala and yogurt. The quality and safety of raw milk are essential in producing high quality milk products. Milk quality control tests ensure that milk and milk products are safe, healthy and meet the standards for chemical composition, purity and levels of bacteria and other microorganisms. We normally have a lab whereby when we receive the milk from the platform, there are some certain tests we normally do. We normally do the lactometer reading, aflatoxins, antibiotics, uh, resusurine test, and also the organoleptic test. One of the leading products at Baraka Farm is cheese. Cheese is a very high protein food, and one can take cheese with bread, rice, burgers, and sandwiches. Baraka Farm makes an assortment of cheeses such as mozzarella and paneer, the semi-hard cheese. For, for our production, we normally pasteurize this milk to around uh, 65 degrees, then we cool it to 30 degrees, then we add some ingredients. In this case, we normally have four types of ingredients. One, we normally have potassium nitrate. We normally add 20 grams per 100 liters. Another ingredient is uh, calcium chloride. We normally add 25 grams per, per 100 liters. Another ingredient is the rennet, which is an enzyme that causes coagulation of milk. And lastly, we have a culture that no now makes this uh, cowder uh, cheese. From there now, we agitate this milk to around uh, three minutes, then we incubate it for around 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, this milk would have coagulated. So what you normally do, we normally cut this uh, curd to separate the whey proteins and the curd. So cutting normally takes 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, for example, if you have a thousand liters, we normally remove around 250 liters of whey proteins. Then we add hot water, which is around 55 degrees. The quantity should be 120 liters if you have a thousand liters. So after removing 250 liters of whey proteins, we add that hot water, which is 120 liters. So this hot water will now increase the temperature of the curd. Remember, when we were adding ingredients, it was around 30 degrees. So after adding that 120 liters of the hot water, which is 55 degrees, it will increase the temperature of the curd from 30 to 33. From there now, you leave it to agitate. It will agitate for around five minutes. Then now you remove the whey proteins. This time around, you, you don't just measure the whey protein. You just remove everything until the card is feasible. When the card is feasible now, you stop it and you add hot water for the second time. The quantity should be 60 liters, halfway of the first one. So after adding this hot water, we are now increasing the temperature of that card from 33 to 36. In other words, what we are doing, we are washing that card. So after washing that card for five minutes, you collect the card aside using the cheese sieve to do what's known as ripening. After ripening it now for 30 minutes, that's the time we collect the card using the cheese net, the mold, and the lid, whereby you, you, you take it to the press, you press it into desired shape. If it's a wheel or it's a block, 
It depends with which type of uh, size do you want. Then after pressing it now, we normally press it for one and a half hours, an interval of 30 minutes. After every 30 minutes, you press it, you release it, you press it for one and a half hours. Then you press it heavily until the following day. The following day now, you release this cheese, you take it to brain. Brain is just concentrated sodium chloride. So it will stay there for around three days, but the following day you turn this cheese so that the, the lower side will suck the, the salt from the, lower, from the upper side. Then from there you just take it to the shelves for it to, to dry. So after drying it now, what you normally do, you, rea you realize that this is cheese. So if you leave this cheese, there will be growth of yeast and mold. So to prevent that, what you do, you just wipe it using vinegar and you do the plasticization, that's cheese coating, to prevent now the uh, molds from entering it. So after coating it now, you now take it to our cold room where we control temperature and, humil and, uh, temperature and humidity. Temperature should be 12 degrees, humidity should be 85 percent. Cheese has different ages and can range from one month to four years or older. This depends on the preference of clients. The age of the cheese will determine its price. The older the cheese, the more expensive it is. Mr. Lufisai tells us they can break even with value addition in milk production and profit. We normally have some standards, especially for the pata fat content. If the pata fat content is very high, we normally have a higher price. Raw milk goes to 60 shilling now, but not for one liter. If we do value addition, one liter, for example, for yogurt, goes to 200 shillings. So that one, it has break even. One of the challenges the processes face is aflatoxin contamination in the feeds and antibiotic residues in the milk. Baraka Farms is working with farmers to train them on feeding their livestock with aflatoxin-free feeds and urging them to observe the withdrawal period after treatment. At the farm level, we have a program whereby we produce this uh, food. We are making silage in the farm. Another thing, we are making uh, dairy meal in the farm and also breeding. So we have a certain number of animals. When this animal score maybe goes to drying, another one is paturating. Apart from making profits, Baraka Farm is working towards ensuring sustainability by producing feeds for the animals and reducing gas emissions by converting cow dung waste to biogas used as fuel on the farm. There is a silo there whereby we produce a biogas. This biogas is normally used to uh, as a fuel in the farm. Besides working with farmers, Baraka Farm works with regulators like the Kenya Dairy Board to ensure Kenyans consume safe milk products. Dairy Board, what they normally do actually is to see the quality of this milk. Is this milk fit for human consumption? That's why, that's why we have a lab whereby we, we measure all those parameters. Also the equipments. Uh, this equipment is fit for maybe for, for processing. So we are now working with them so that they can also give us some training so that we can, whenever we don't meet those uh, standards, they chip in and they train us.